Welcome to the, the Low Carb, Carb Athlete, Athlete Podcast, Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's Debbie, and have you used a CGM before? CGM is Continuous Glucose Monitor, and there's different options out there. Ideally, you can get it from your doctor, but they seem to just want to wait until you're type 2 diabetic and not be preventative. I would like us to take ownership of our health and make choices now to prevent having high, low glucose readings and optimize your health from the inside out by testing and not guessing. And that includes a CGM that goes on for 14 days and you can order one via NutriSense. And a CGM is giving you glucose updates with a small device in the back of your arm, 24 seven. Totally easy, I actually did a video on my YouTube channel, Low Carb Athlete, how to apply this CDM, first time, kind of scared, but it doesn't hurt. But it gives you real-time glucose readings. Glucose response to meals, you'll learn about what foods are reactive to you, and that could be a healthy food that you think is great, but it could raise your glucose. Simple things as stevia, for me, raise my glucose. Chewing gum, raise my glucose. Stress, when I'm driving a car and there's traffic, raises my glucose. Every stress response is a glucose response. So learn how to manage your stress. Learn, learn how to pick right foods for you, unless you can you know, do other lab testing and figure out vibrant wellness food zoomers, but it's kind of expensive for people. So if you can wear a CGM, it's a great way to learn about stress, food, exercise, stacking movement with your nutrition, figure out how to balance your blood sugar. So we want to learn more about how to exercise and eat or not eat. And morning cortisol, does it raise your glucose? If there's hidden stressors at nighttime, does your glucose go up higher while you're sleeping? So it gives us lots of clues that we can put in our investigation when we are working on your personalized fueling training and performance program to improve fat loss, performance and longevity. So head to NutriSense website, NutriSense.io, how it works. You can learn more about your habits, your routines, your relationship to food, a little bit more great app to use, and it can sync on to different programs. So you can put it all together. So if you want to get started with your journey in NutriSense, I suggest this to all my clients. Use at least 30 days so you can do a 30-day, 90-day different programs, but you can pick which one you want. You get the sensor in the mail, put it on, last for 14 days, sync it to the nap, and get your readings on there. And then if you're doing my VIP coaching program, I'm working with you to correlate this data together. So begin your health optimization journey with NutriSense, and you can save on your order with our code, as usual, low carb athlete. So no carbs is not our goal, it's carb timing and using NutriSense, can, you can help figure out your nutrient dense whole food plan and when to adjust your macros based on your exercise intensity duration based on your life stressors and learn more. So it's nice to have this data. So test and not guess with NutriSense. Let me know how you like it. Hey everyone, it's Debbie Potts, the host of the Low Carb Athlete, doing a solo episode on another Thursday to talk a little bit more about specific topics. And today I wanted to dive into what is a comprehensive blood chemistry panel that ideally you can get through your doctor under insurance, but sadly many doctors are not able to run a full comprehensive panel that we would like to see in functional medicine because I think more so that insurance doesn't cover it, so they don't cover it. So if you want to be preventative and avoiding metabolic chaos, avoiding type 2 diabetes, avoiding inflammation in your body, we want to get clues in advance before we're sick and not just get our traditional medicine values 
the ranges that you get in the blood work that they do do is huge. If you look at the ranges, they're not based on healthy optimal levels. So in functional medicine, we get a blood chemistry panel. Often we have to order additional markers that the doctors don't do to get the full picture, but we look at them in, through a different lens of one is the functional range is optimal for those numbers, those markers. We want to see in a much smaller, narrower range based on clues that we're going to get from there. If it's low, if it's high, we want to see what that means and we're collecting clues as we see different patterns when different markers are high and low they're providing insight to additional sources of stress or dysfunction or imbalance so instead of just saying this is low take this for that medication supplement we want to look at more the whole picture so we can really figure out what else is going on? What's that why? Why is that high? And it's so different. In conventional medicine, you're going to see, as I said, the, the broad reference ranges versus a functional medicine approach is a tight, optimal ranges. And we're looking at identifying changes in your physiology. We're trying to catch dysfunction earlier so it can be corrected through diet, lifestyle, natural supplements that we recommend to restore function back to the body. So you're bringing your body back to balance, homeostasis. In conventional medicine, not knocking it, it, it is needed, but there's certain areas that we need a little bit more investigation and looking at more the why going a little bit deeper. So instead of just identifying disease or waiting for it to happen and then prescribing medications to treat abnormal markers as statins for high cholesterol, I'm finding it pretty fascinating when I'm looking at my clients coming to me, what that high level or low level means. And it's really crazy, fascinating and interesting going down different rabbit holes. But when we see those markers high, and then we can correlate that to other labs if possible as a GI test and the Dutch hormone test, or maybe organic acids, really see what's going on as well as a wheat zoomer. You know, what's going on with the microbiome? What's going on with inflammatory markers, LPS endotoxins, and more. So we look at not just saying, okay, you're okay, you're normal, you're fine, but what if you're struggling, you're not getting the desired results, you're doing all the right things, air quotes, that we are striving to be healthy. But what does that mean? What does that healthy food plan and healthy lifestyle plan mean for you is gonna be different. And then if we look at those hidden internal sources of chronic stress and look at genetics, epigenetics, we are really needing to look at what you need to restore your unique body back to optimal levels. So normal does not mean optimal. So when you get your blood chemistry from your doctor, everyone seems to be normal unless it's really high or really low. So normal doesn't reflect what is healthy. We learn this as an FDN practitioner. We do blood chemistry analysis programs and different lab tests. We do specific training in these areas to really help us be better at being a health investigator to help put the missing pieces of your health puzzle back together so you are your best version of you. So a lot of these labs, people are looking, doctors are looking at, you know, these different numbers, but they're missing the opportunity to address dysfunction before it turns into disease. So we learn this as you know, the snowball effect we learn in FDN that it's a process that starts from initial stage with small significance and builds upon itself, becoming larger and more serious and potentially more dangerous. So the blood chemistry testing can be a useful tool that allows us to gain a lot of insight into the body if we interpret the blood chemistry panels by using it, our functional reference ranges and not the lab's reference ranges. So we're identifying problems early stages so we can help avoid this snowball effect. And I think this is so important to do. So it's a functional reference range, again, not 
normal that you'll see from your doctor, normal but not healthy. And then we're looking at normal uh, functional ranges or more optimal values. So we have high, low ranges are going to be giving us clues to so much more. So what we've learned as FDM practitioners, looking at any red flags that point to dysfunction, are these markers in range, but are they optimal? We're looking at your comprehensive blood chemistry panel from, from a functional perspective, from a different lens. And there's markers that are higher or lower than optimal, and they'll suggest nutritional deficiencies as vitamin B6, vitamin B12, folate, vitamin C and or iron, digestion, inflammation and digestive functions, chronic infection, intestinal parasites, liver dysfunction, food and environmental sensitivities. So these non-optimal markers, we can get that information from a blood chemistry panel. So other information we learn in a functional blood chemistry analysis is looking at where is dysfunction in your body? If so, where is it? What is it? What are the sources or causes of dysfunction? What individualized treatments are needed? And when has the function been restored? So that is what we're looking at a little bit more into each one I can give you help on. But blood chemistry testing can identify and or confirm patterns or trends from other findings. So we correlate it with other information. Now, this is the most inexpensive lab test. Hopefully, ideally, majority, all is covered by insurance. It's easy to get. You can go to your doctor or there's LabCorp. Uh, what's the other one? The other labs, you can go get your blood drawn. And there's DHA labs that we use or Alta labs that you can see on my link in the page, show notes here, altalabs.com and Debbie Potts Coaching. You can go down here and there's always a 20% off coupon that pops up. But if you go down to altalabs.com homepage under Debbie Potts Coaching, so you go altalabs.com backslash partners backslash Debbie Potts Coaching. And you go on the homepage, slide down here, to the baseline biomarkers, basic, basic plus, advanced, comprehensive. Comprehensive is only $389, much cheaper than picking and choosing the markers individually, plus 20% off. Now, some of these I have to add on. So if you click on their baseline biomarkers, they have a lot of markers that we want to get tested in here as including a full thyroid panel, uric acid, you'll get all the markers, but there's a couple I'd like to add on as insulin. So if we click on insulin up in the search bar, you can go say, if I want insulin, I want to add that on. And then insulin most popular is $26. Your doctor, at least my doctor, I've seen don't test insulin in your blood chemistry panel unless you have type two diabetes running in your family. Now, if you've read anything on type two diabetes, insulin resistance is a precursor to type two diabetic diabetes. So if you are trying to be preventative and getting type two diabetes, ideally we get these metabolic markers checked in advance so we know how to make adjustments in our nutrition, fasting, exercise protocols and supplementation. Now you can click, there's the suspected insulin resistant panel that's A1C glucose and insulin. There's more packages. So what I love about Ulta Labs is all the different options on here. See if you want like CRP, if you're having some curiosity or preventative, cardio IQ is HSCRP, it's only $33. C-reactive protein is something you wanna check as a blood test is lowers, um, what does it say? Blood tests used to accurately detect lower concentrations of the protein, C-reactive protein, evaluate the risk from for cardiovascular and heart disease and check for inflammation and many other issues. So that's a great one I want to see in the CR, in your blood chemistry is a CRP. But there's other ones you can go, okay, I wanna get a full chemistry, um, chemistry, I can't read, cholesterol testing panel, there's a fitness number one, baseline blood tennis, oh my gosh, baseline blood test panel, female, and more. So altalabs.com backslash partners, back, 
backslash Debbie Potts Coaching. You can check out all these different panels. Remember, they're additional 20% off when you see that pop up come on. But this one is actually good. A baseline blood test female marker it has testosterone in it as well. Lipid panel, CRP, metabolic panel, CBC, and then you can get on, add on some other markers. Okay, so what I'm doing now for my clients listening to the podcast is giving you a discount on what I call the assessment package. So if we go to my coaching packages, I do the basic of the assessment that I'm going to describe, the health detective that is a little more in depth with the functional lab test investigation and me really being your health investigator. And then there's the VIP comprehensive package that six months to a year of diving deep, doing your nutrition, exercise, and labs and retesting as we go. Now, the assessment, what I would suggest doing, it's two payments broken up. It's $5.97, but for you listening to the podcast, $4.97. And we can do this two payments if you don't want to do one because I want to make it affordable. But this includes a nutritional therapy assessment, which I can go into a little bit more. NutriQ, it's a 309 questions of signs and symptoms correlates to different functions as liver detoxification, small intestine, large intestine, mineral imbalance, digestion issues, and hormones and immune system and everything. So that's a nutritional therapy assessment. Plus on that NutriQ, I give you a three-day food log with symptoms that is very detailed. We're looking at your poop, we're looking at your energy during the day, how you feel after you eat, and then your exercise. So I can really work on seeing what you're eating pre post-workout. Are you eating enough? Are you eating at all? Are you fasting too long, too little, and really checking out how do you feel based on all that. Then we go through the blood chemistry assessment. I added this on because I really want you to at least be able to take ownership of your health and make it affordable. So this assessment package is 597. Blood chemistry panel I just added. You can get it, your blood chemistry panel in Alta Labs. There are the links on NutriQ I send my clients. And then again, you can get $100 off. And it includes two 45-minute coaching sessions to go over the results and my recommendations, how to course correct. So super simple way to get started. The lab testing assessment, I find just amazing information we can get from here, but it often gives me clues that, well, we need to go a little deeper. I think there's might be infection or parasite or something going on. So again, as I always say, test and not guess, what else might be going on that are creating inflammation in your body and we might have to go in a little deeper that costs money doing the other labs but at least this way you can get a clue and use that with the nutritional therapy assessment if you're on a budget it's a great way to start and because the lab testing a gi map might be you know 300 to 500 dollars for these labs so this blood chemistry panel with the combination of the nutri nutritional therapy assessment NutriQ link I send clients gives you lots of information. So the comprehensive blood panels, we want a CMP, comprehensive metabolic panel, lipid panel, a CBC, which is complete blood count. You want to get a full iron panel, a thyroid panel, other markers we want to look at, vitamin D, and blood sugar regulation markers, insulin, A1C, methylation markers, homocysteine, histamine, and you can even go into more the female panel or the male panel on, as I said, Alta Labs. So great information. The CMP examines the health of the liver and the kidneys, lipid panel, cholesterol, as you know, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, but also to me, that's going to give us correlation to thyroid, low thyroid, liver congestion goes together poor conversion of your T4 hormone to T3 gives us lots of clues there. CBC complete blood count. This is going to be the blood, red and white blood cell platelets and used for checking anemia, infections, other disorders. And the iron panel, super fascinating as well. Iron panel measures amount of iron in the blood and the body's ability to use iron. If you just listened to our podcast out on Tuesday, more about ferritin levels amazing to get this information, especially as we're athletes and we're pushing ourselves 
often doing too much of everything, really testing quarterly, at least every six months and not do just an annual blood check. It makes no sense to me to just do blood work and every year. There's so much that goes on in a year. So you should really be preventative and working on performance and longevity by testing quarterly or every six months and then figuring out a plan nutritionally, lifestyle and supplementation based on the clues that we get. If you can do HTMA, the upgraded formulas, a hair tissue mineral analysis is a couple hundred dollars, a great way to do testing as well with this blood chemistry every quarter. A full thyroid panel, this looks at how the pituitary gland is signaling the thyroid gland to produce hormones and thyroid hormone production. Remember, the doctors usually just measure TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, that's a measurement of your pituitary gland. You want to get the T4 and the T3 and look at your antibodies for thyroid, see if you have any Hashimoto's and autoimmune issues, but we also want to look at reverse T3. And if the cortisol is up out of whack, often the thyroid is put on hold. So adrenal issue, looking at urine or saliva test, for that over 24 hour period, not looking at cortisol in a blood marker test means really not a lot to me because I wanna see your cortisol rhythm throughout the day. So thyroid panel, you want to get more than just TSH and remember the T4 is inactive form of thyroid hormone and we want to see your levels T3 is what T4 is converted in T3, so active form of thyroid hormone is T3. So there's patterns of thyroid we'll go into again on another solo podcast to look at what are the different patterns of hypothyroidism. Taking a thyroid medication isn't going to always be the solution for low thyroid. For example, is that poor conversion of T4, T3. T4 levels might be fine, but T3 is low, that's because often of liver and gut dysfunction. So there's a lot to look at, not just looking at one marker, is looking at the whole picture. Vitamin D levels, we wanna see them up higher. Insulin levels, fasting, we want to check that because that is the measurement of the hormone insulin enabling the cells to take in glucose. So we want to be insulin sensitive. A1C is the blood sugar average over the last three months. And then homocysteine measures the level of the amino acid homocysteine in the blood. And histamine is great to do as well, measures the chemical compound of histamine in the blood if we have high histamine levels. And we wanna look at these individual markers, we want to look at the patterns, and we want to look at the why. Why is this not optimal? Why is this pattern present. And then I'm going to correlate all that information with your health history, your nutritional therapy assessment, with your nutrition and lifestyle and exercise food log you're going to do for me three days or longer. And then any functional lab test, if you continue on with more of a health investigation package that I do with clients who really want to dive in deep is going to include often the GI, a stool test and hair tissue mineral test and a hormone test, Dutch or saliva, Dutch test is urine or saliva test. So really make sure you're getting this blood chemistry panel you wanna know. Example, a pattern we might see is hypochloridia, low stomach acid. You need minerals, calcium and iron and zinc to be higher and that needs an acidic environment to be absorbed. So your organ, the stomach needs to be acidic, 1.5 to 3.0 pH scale. And if we have too low of stomach acid, you'll see markers low chloride, high carbon dioxide, high BUN, high total globulin, uh, and a b- bunch of other lower markers that correlate to low HCL. But then we wanna look at, okay, why is there low stomach acid? Is it an H. pylori infection that will interfere with HCL production? Low thyroid, when metabolism slows down, HCL production may also decrease. So we wanna look at that. And then to me, that's also looking at your cortisol, your adrenal function. Micronutrient deficiency, if you have low zinc and B1, those are part of the cofactors, ingredients are needed to make stomach acid. If you are not eating enough protein in your diet, 
that might be low stomach acid because if you're more vegetarian or vegan, you're not eating any animal products or you don't eat a lot of meat, protein is needed to stimulate HCL production in the parietal parietal the cells. And then when you have stress, when you're in fight or flight too much, chronic stress impacts everything, remember, this shuts down the production of HCL and enzymes. So relate that with low thyroid. Usually when we see people in fight or flight, higher, lower than optimal cortisol, stress hormones are out of whack, out of balance, the thyroid will be impacted as well. So then we're going to see low stomach acid. So a lot of clients need to take digestive enzymes and HCL supplements if they do not have H. pylori. I don't like to give people HCL supplements unless we do a GI test with H. pylori on there to make sure we don't have H. pylori bacteria overgrowth. So stress impacts your stomach acid. If you are obviously taking acid blocking medications, over the counter heartburn medications, PPI medications, reduce your HCL production. So ironically, when you go to a doctor and you have, you're not digesting your food properly, they give you anti-acid, it's exact opposite of what we need. We need more acidic environment to break down that protein into amino acids. So if you're taking an anti-acid pill, you're going to have lower stomach acid and you're not going to be able to digest proteins properly. So it's another stupid thing of our system here. So autoimmune conditions, autoimmunity against the parietal cells, which are the cells in the stomach that secrete ACL, HCL, and the intrinsic factor leads to decreased HCL production. Antibodies against the parietal cells can be measured on a Cyrex Labs array number five test. So people with autoimmune conditions, it's Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, different autoimmune disorders, they are more likely to develop another type of autoimmune condition. So I have people with celiac that I've been working with and really seeing poor stomach acid and their lab tests and their signs and symptoms when we do nutritional therapy assessment and they actually need a little bit more support in breaking down that protein. So we want to correlate all this together and help create a personalized program for you. But really, I strongly suggest people, if you can afford it, do a GI test, do the other labs, because we're not getting the whole picture unless we do more. So doing the blood chemistry is the most affordable way to get an idea of what's going on in your body if you have some inflammation and You know, you go see your own doctor and they say, oh no, everything's normal, but you're still struggling. That's when we want to go a little deeper and at least, you know, look at the blood chemistry. And then we find out you really need to budget and save some money for some additional testing. We can look at a micronutrient test, a parasite test, GI pathogens, um, you know, looking at, uh, what was I just saying? The hair tissue mineral test is interesting of toxic heavy metals and mineral imbalances and that gives signs too. You can listen to my podcast I did with Barton Scott of Upgraded Formulas that it also show if you have sluggish thyroid, if you don't have the right nutrients to make thyroid, if your adrenals don't have the right nutrients. So lots of information because if, say example, micronutrient test, tests over 30 different vitamin, mineral, antioxidants, amino acids using lymphocytes isolated from the blood. Intracellular nutri-testing as this is much superior to serum nutri- nutrient testing as a serum in your blood. B12 is a poor reflection of nutritional sufficiency. So if you want to know really what's going on, it's not just the blood test doesn't give us all the nutrients you need and it's not a good reflection. We want to know what's in the cells not just in the blood. So intra versus extra cellular. So anyways, those are some thoughts, you know, doing a zinc test and there's other things to do and looking at iodine tests we can do too, that we did nutritional therapy. It's a little skin test you can do and kind of put all this together. So I would love to go into this a little more. I look at each person's blood chemistry panel and look at what's high and low. And I was just going to pull up uh, the cholesterol. Here's some good ones. I look at my outline. If your 
markers of thyroid, your cholesterol. So let's look at cholesterol because that's always a big one. So if you go, well, triglycerides. If triglycerides, optimal range is 70 to 80. If you are above 80, say higher range, that can be a clue to many things. So this is not everything. I'm just going to list some examples of high triglycerides can be related to metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hyperglycemia, fatty liver, liver congestion, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, poor metabolism, poor utilization of fats, which could be low bile acids and low lipase enzymes to break those fats down, hypothyroidism, H. pylori infection, adrenal dysfunction, alcoholism, oral contraceptives. If your triglycerides are lower than 70, well, that's a clue towards liver bile dysfunction, hyperthyroidism, So, or you could have excess thyroid medication. That's why you need to test if you're on thyroid medication, make sure you're not taking uh, too much or too little, so you're checking in on your levels. Autoimmune disorders can cause low triglycerides, and adrenal hyperfunction can cause low triglycerides. So we want to look at these blood chemistry panels and then functional tests that will correlate this blood marker with as well as looking at nutrition, lifestyle, alcohol consumption, you know, getting the big picture. So if we see different patterns, we want to, you know, see what you can do lifestyle wise, some lifestyle supplement, nutritional therapy, you know, get your nutrients from the food. But Another area to look at are your neutrophils, your lymphocytes, you know, all these other blood chemistry markers, monocytes. If they're high, recovery phase infection, liver dysfunction, intestinal parasites, gut inflammation. If they're low, there could be B12, folate deficiency, metal conditions that affect bone marrow, endotoxemia, which are toxins released into the blood by certain types of bacteria. Asonophils can be high, that could be intestinal parasites, food environmental allergies, food sensitivities, asthma, and they could also be elevated due to fungal overgrowth. So we want to look at high and low and functional ranges and then look at why and then look at the big picture, what patterns do we see? So hopefully that gives you some help, motivation to figure out how to be the best version of yourself and how you can get started on taking ownership of your health and making it affordable by checking out these functional lab tests. Look at my website, debbiepotsnet.net. Get your assessments done. Learn what you can do to take care of the whole you. Get these blood markers, but getting the Alta Labs I think is a great way to get started. Nutritional therapy link. I do analysis with people on there. I send them all these steps. So if you want to learn more, just set a call up with me, Debbie Potts, discovery call on this blog post. I'll put in the show notes, get your assessments done. You don't know if you're doing the right thing or maybe you need to course correct, change it up a little bit. So that is my thoughts for today. So hopefully that helps and kind of correlates with what we talked about on the Tuesday episode, talking about lab testing and ferritin and how important it is to not just be normal, but be optimal and figure out if you are above or below that, what that means instead of just taking a medication. Let's look at the whole picture and really be fit and healthy from the inside out because we want to improve performance in life and your sports, but really improve the aging process. So we're looking at longevity, how you can be thriving as you get older and live your best life. Like I see people retirement, traveling all over the world, still racing and doing events and having fun and exploring the world instead of well, being in a wheelchair. So let's thrive and start taking ownership now when we're say 50 years old, 40 years old, start looking ahead. So let me know if you have questions, debbiepotts.net and head to the blog page to get all the links that I talked about in the show notes. Enjoy your day and have that positive attitude to create positive energy and positive vibes. Enjoy. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook. 
or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.